He remembers how he moved the slab of tree that blocked the end of the gallery. There was a hidden triangle of key slots sunk in the middle of the bark. He runs his fingers over the two marble pages. Each line of the book is carved deeply, and there's lavish Latin writing engraved all over them. He looks again. It isn't Latin, or even Greek. He doesn't recognize it. It could be Etruscan, maybe Phrygian. The soldier steps closer and focuses the light for Tom. What are you doing? Just trying something. He shows him the black stone pendant. This is a key. If I can find the right locks, we may discover something behind here. As long as it's not lions, I don't mind. He smiles and points his light down and off to the left. It illuminates an open steel gate, about a meter high and half a meter wide. They came through there. The place is full of animal shit and bowls of dry food. There aren't any more. I already checked. Tom is relieved. Can I have the light back, please? The soldier obliges. The book is small enough for Tom to scan it quickly. He notices for the first time that the left-hand page is scored with diagonal lines that cross in the center. He explores it for hidden slots. There aren't any. Then it occurs to him that the crossed lines create a giant X. X for 10. He's sure he's found a connection to the 10th book. But what is it? He shifts his focus to the right-hand page. There are no obvious clues. It looks almost identical to the left-hand one, except there are no diagonal lines. Tom knows the clue is staring him in the face, but he can't see it. He suddenly remembers the optical puzzles, where you stare at a pattern, and when your focus slips, another far more intricate one becomes visible. He concentrates hard. Too hard. He blinks, relaxes, tries again. He's conscious of the soldier next to him, and it's distracting. He lets his focus go and clears his mind, almost as though he were preparing for prayer. From the marble page appears an image he's more than familiar with. A pentagram. An inverted one. He daren't blink. Mustn't move an inch. Can't let it vanish. He stretches out his hand and tries the pendant in the first point. It fits. He presses it in and feels a latch click. Slowly and carefully, he works his way anti-clockwise along the other points of the pentagram. Each contains a hidden lock. The fifth and final lock gives off a satisfying click. But nothing happens. Nothing opens. He must have to pull, push, slide, or lift something. But what? The soldier looks at him quizzically. The book doesn't move. The statue doesn't move. Nor does the wall in front of them. They push and pull some more. Nothing moves. The soldier lifts the light to Tom's face. What did you expect to happen? Good question. I'm not sure. Something to open, I guess? The soldier gives him a sympathetic look. Okay, come on. We should get out of here. They turn around and head towards the exit. On the far wall, over to the left, the soldier's light picks out something. A passageway. Tom grabs his arm and points the flashlight at the opening. Was that there before? The soldier shakes his head. No, I checked the whole place and I didn't see it. Tom heads towards it. Wait! The soldier gives him a stern look and nods the gun in his hands. Tom sees his point. He follows a couple of meters behind the officer. Part way through the opening, he knows what kind of place they've entered. It's a graveyard. A columbarium. Identical to the one Anna described in her crazed writings as Cassandra. The place is vast. High walls are filled with what look like dovecotes. Personal spaces for ancient cremation urns. Tom examines the edges of the shelves. They're marked with Roman numerals. The one he's looking at says DXX, and the one next to it, DXIX. He knows he's standing at 520 and 519. He follows the numbers down and back towards the entrance. On the bottom shelf, he finds what he's looking for. X. X.